Be on Facebook. Uh, all right. Oh, this is a tough day, so I need to dial me in today, okay? Because this is uh, this is one of those things where I've never actually done it, so we're going to try some new stuff. But the, the title of the day is The Veil. If you have your Bible, we'll go to John's Gospel. The disciple whom Jesus loved by his own admission. John 21. Verse 1 through 3. I'll try to zip through this as much as I can. But this is one of those stories that just, and I got so much to say right here. Because when we were in Bethel, I heard some stuff that reminded me of here. And one of the things that one of the pastors was said that was there before Bill Johnson ever came, okay? was that their previous pastor had been asked to step down. And he said, back in those days, we didn't really know how to take care of people. So that when you made a mistake, we just shot you in the head and kicked you in the face. Right? Right? That's kind of how we've done people. And it's like, you know what? If we got everybody back that used to love the Lord, we wouldn't have enough room for them right now. And I'm going to be honest with you, before we go win any other folks, God's going to get us busy about restoring his kids. Can I just say right there? Simon Peter, Thomas the twin, and Nathan of Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. That's kind of like that uh, uh, Gilligan's Island song, you know? And the rest, you know, the Professor Mary Ann didn't even get included in the song until the next year. Did y'all know that? Yeah. Had to fuss about it. Did y'all even know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. of course we do. Yeah. So the other disciples who will remain nameless, and Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we're going with you also. Isn't this funny that this is after Jesus is resurrected and, and Peter had all the scandal because he denied Jesus. So much so that when Jesus was resurrected, he said, go tell my disciples and Peter. Peter had excommunicated himself. He was so embarrassed and so ashamed of what he had done that he didn't consider himself to be worthy to be gathered with the rest of them, even though every one of them forsook him. But isn't it funny that even in this setting, Peter, no, I don't care if he has, has signed up for and, and has dialed in to his anointing, he's still anointed by God to be a leader. Now, I want you to understand that I don't, it's just a side job. I don't care what you've done, where you've been, what you've messed up at, what God has called you to do, he's going to expect you to do it. And you're never going to be happy till you fulfill what he's put on you to do. And if I don't hear nothing else, that's enough for that. And they went out immediately and got in the boat and that night and they caught nothing. I found to be true that every time I'm running from God, it's not a real fun, prosperous place to be in. Next page. Right. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? And they answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. Now right about here, a bell's going off. That sounds awful familiar to another time. Then nobody said anything. They're just reeling the net. Yes, we put it inside. They're just reeling that in. And so they cast, and they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Next page. Because see, that other time, let me just go back there. Come on. This is when Jesus first met them. And he pushed out their boat, and he taught them, and he taught them the word, and he, he told them who he was basically through the, the parables. And, and so he said, they, and these guys had been fishing all night and had already washed their net. This is, I mean, you can't say I'm done any better than washing your net. Yeah. Okay. That's the place where you go, I am finished. They fished all night. And this is not like, you know, they just got back from the Bass Pro Shop and everybody's trying to make their new lure. Now, this is their living. This is their livelihood. And they had nothing to take home to mama nor to feed their kids. And so this is not a very great moment. And here's this carpenter. How many of you like when people have a career that have no idea what they're talking about, tell you how to do a job that you're a professional at? So the carpenter steps up and says, hey, I think if your fish run over there. (laughs) 
Now, usually they would just get a retort. <laughs> Why did they decide to do it? Because they didn't sit there listening to talk. Yeah. And they heard something and they felt some authority that yeah. they'd never heard before. Yes. And it's what Peter said. He said, we've talked all night. We've, that's what you know, but I know what I'm doing. I'm good at my job. But because of your word, I'm going to do what you say. Yeah. Pushed out from the land. Through their nets and saw any fish that it began, the nets began to break and they pulled them in. And, and suddenly Peter jumps up and he runs and he falls at Jesus' knees and he says to him, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. What an open, honest moment. And you know what? I can remember so vividly the night I gave myself my heart to Jesus. How I just didn't, you know, all of a sudden I realized he could see me for who I really was. Not the, not the con job I put on everybody around me. He knew who I was. And in that moment, I knew who I was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I didn't argue with one thing. I didn't, I didn't try to tell him how, good I, how much I deserved to be in his kingdom or anything. Right. I wept. And I saw him in my mind's eye. I saw him hanging on that cross. And, and I realized that he had done that just for me. Yeah. Right. I was broken. Yeah. And it's taken me years to get back full of myself. But I'm on my way if I keep doing the things I do. Next page. So we're back to the original story. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, this is John referring to himself, <laughs> said to Peter, <coughs> hey, that's the Lord. Like Peter didn't know that, right? But then he did something really weird. It says he put on his outer garment. And jumped in the water. And who puts clothes on when they jump in the water? Aren't they taking those heavy things that can get, gather water, take it Aren't you taking that stuff off? If you're going to swim on the shore. Why did Peter pick up his coat and put it back on? I'll tell you why. Because he wasn't supposed to be out there fishing. And he knew it was Jesus, and he figured if I can put something on and look pretty and cover up my disobedience and my failure, then maybe he won't notice. The first time he dove at his feet, he says, I, I'm a sinful man. This time he's covering up and wanting to go give him a high five. Hey, Jesus, how you doing, man? You see it. <laughs> Next time. You know why this is this way? Because from the beginning, yes, sir. Yep. from the moment we sin, Christian, we've been trying to cover ourselves up. That's right. Like God can't see through it. You know why it's like this? I tell people all the time, I, I tell my, my minister friends, I have a harder time getting people lost than I do getting them saved. Right. Because now we've got so many excuses for why we're the way we are. We've got so many people to blame for the, the reasons that we are. And it's like, you know what? I don't care who did what to who. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that if you're lost, you need Jesus. Right. And he's the only thing that's going to fix you. Right. When God came looking for Adam, he said, where are you? He said, I heard your voice, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And you know what? That's supposed to have been going on from the very beginning. That moment I got saved, I wasn't. I was naked. I was completely uncovered. God reached into the deepest parts of me, and I gave him everything I had. But isn't it funny? From that moment, we start trying to gather and collect. Because, see, we're not around God anymore as much. We're not around Jesus as much. We're around each other. Right. And we found that, that those sheep that, that Leah talked about, they bite. And they come, sometimes can be vicious. And sometimes they can leave scars and things that we don't get over for a while. So we rebuild our wall as quickly as we can. Yep. Next page. When Mark chapter 15... When Jesus is hanging on that cross. And he finally breathed his last and he cried out, it is finished. Something remarkable. Now, of course, the, the sky was turned black and the earth began to quake. So much so that, I don't know if you know this, but graves were opened up and people right. got up that were dead and walked back into town. Yes, sir. <laughs> don't you know, they're trying to figure out what in the world just happened. Oh, yeah. I was just yeah. Moses. What, what is this? <laughs> But then the most phenomenal thing happened is that in that temple, now listen to me, in the place where the presence of God would rest, 
The blue flame of his glory would be in the Holy of Holies. That there would be this veil, this, this curtain, this that, that doesn't even do it justice. This cloth wall that was 18 inches thick. Can you imagine? That was between the Holy of Holies and us. Because if we came in contact with that holiness, Eddie, then it would kill us. That, that very presence would just kill our sinful flesh. And only once a year, the high priest, after he had offered sacrifice for sin and put blood on parts of his body, would, go, would dare venture inside to offer a blood sacrifice for the nation of Israel. And even then, they would tie a rope around his waist and put bells on him in case he would, hadn't done enough to, to make himself pure that they could drag his dead body out and send the next volunteer in. Right. Yeah. right. But on that day of atonement, when that high priest went in there to offer that sacrifice, that veil was torn. Thank you, Lord. And it was torn from the top to the bottom. Yes. Not from the bottom to the top, but from the top to the bottom because it was God's idea. Yes. Because as Jesus' flesh was being torn, that veil was torn because what we finally figured out was the veil that had always separated us from his presence was our flesh. Right. That's good, Pastor. Mm. In Hebrews 10, he said, Therefore, brethren, have the boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Well, how can I have boldness to enter into his presence? I haven't been good today. What difference does that make? Right. I'm not entering by my goodness or my badness. I'm not entering by my worthiness. I'm coming because somebody else took my place and tore his, when we tore his flesh, he tore my veil. Yes. I enter the Holy Spirit the blood of Jesus by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, through the veil that is our flesh. Well, here's the problem then. Next page. The veil that separated us from the holy presence of God was always our flesh. We were born in sin, incapable of being cleansed. I had this conversation with somebody the other night. And it was like, you know, Xavier, he was talking to Eddie, he was talking to some of, his, some of them, they go on the trail of tears in the motorcycle games, and there was a guy sitting there drinking, and the guy said, you're going you to judge me now because I drink. And, and we were talking about it, like, you know what? Because if, if I'm going to judge you and say you're going to hell because you drink, then I'm going to say if you quit drinking, you can go to heaven, and that doesn't get you there either. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. So exactly what little thing can we camp out around, you know, whether it be, uh, uh, you know, we don't seem to go after obesity and pride like we do homosexuality, but I go around the time. All I'm trying to say is, is that the one thing that gets you there has nothing to do with those habits that you're finding. And if you'll ever realize it, but see what happens is because we all are not perfect, and if you think you are, boy, am I going to have a conversation with you. Because it's, those are exactly the things that Satan wants to point out every day. Yeah. Because he wants to show you you're not worthy. That's right. Right? right. Yes. Amen. Well, Jesus became, he said he was incapable of being cleansed by the blood of bulls and goats. Jesus became us. Right. Clothed himself in our flesh. Then let us rip him apart. Mm. And then he paid the price for our sin. And when he was satisfied, the Father tore the veil of the temple from top to bottom to show us that nothing could separate us now. Next page. Well, 2 Corinthians 3, this is where we're at. He says, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. So when Moses went up to see God and he stood and, and his glory passed by him, his goodness passed by him, it, it, that, that when Moses came down up the mountain, his face shone like the sun. Nobody could look at him. Right. I'm talking, I, how long was he on that mountain? What, 40 days? 
And they couldn't. He looked like the sun. And so but what was so sad is that as being separated from that presence, that glory began to etch, etch away and fade away. And Moses was so scared that people would see that happening to him and think possibly that he was no longer God's man, that he put a veil over it. Right. Mm. I was talking to my son this week, and we were talking about how we get in these small groups, and you can just tell people are just throwing Stuff in the in the mix because they want you to see that. I've got a comment. I've got a scripture. I've got I've got an experience. I want you to look at this, but don't you dare peer past my brand new that made veil. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. Let me impress you with my spiritual knowledge. Let me let me talk to you about things that don't really matter. Yeah. That's right, that's right. But dear God, don't us ever get real. Right. And I just think it's a shame that Jesus paid such a price to tear the veil that we spend all our lives trying to build it back up. Is everybody with me? Next yes. Yes, sir. See, Satan is always trying to get you to judge yourself by pointing at your sin. Jesus is always trying to get you to realize your righteousness by pointing to himself. If you're looking at what's wrong with you, you're looking at the wrong place. Look under the author and the finisher. Quit looking at you. And if there are people in your life that want you to look at you, get away from them! You do not need them in your life. That's why God made caller ID. That's why you can just mute it. Unfriend is Hebrew for get them out of here. Wow. You don't have to sign up for that every day. That's right. That's right. You're the dummy that's doing it. Don't blame me. <laughs> so and so made me feel. Nobody's making you feel anything. You just need right. to keep signing up for it. We'll quit doing it. Oh, yes. I hung up on some people. Come on. Yeah. Surely not. <laughs> that was the best that it's going to get. <laughs> <laughs> And after a while, they got the message and came back and quit saying that stuff. Right. Some of them didn't get the message, didn't come back. Boo hoo. Yeah. Next page. Yeah. Too old for that. Yeah. For fear that our glory is fading. Listen to this. If you don't get anything else, look at this page. We manufacture a new veil. It's our spiritual jargon or our Christian ease or our learned scriptural responses. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Anything to divert attention from the fact that I am hurting. I'm lonely, I'm struggling, I'm angry. I'm not perfect. Yeah. We can't dare be that way. Come on, Pastor. Because we'll kill each other. Yeah. Right. So we hide behind a veil of, of yeah. lies and we pretend that everything's okay. And then, dear God, hope nobody falls. Because we'll just trample on you on the way. That's right. That's right. And we create a place where nobody can be real. Why is it that people could come to Jesus and, and they were sinners and they were drawn to him and yet we seem to repel them? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And don't lie to me because I know I'm telling the truth. Right. Right. It's because we are expecting you to look at our veil, our facade of who we want to be. Come on. And the irony is this. We don't let Jesus stay. Who do you think is behind that girl? The devil. Yeah. Yeah. How can I let Jesus down? I didn't. I didn't raise him up. Right. And I didn't put him on the throne. He's already on the throne. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If you're looking to me as your author and your finisher, I got news for you. You're gonna be disappointed. Yeah. So let me turn you to the one. Let me point you to the one that is perfect. Right. That's and quit right. trying to be perfect in front of you. Because I'm gonna fail. I'm gonna let you down. Right. I don't mean to, but half the time, the you and I've got. I don't get. Good and bad, I get bad and worse. -er. Those are my choices. Somebody's always going to get their panties in or not, and there's nothing they can do about it. Sometimes I'll forget. I'll actually forget and let you down. I'll, I'll miss, do, I won't do what you want me to do. And you know, I'm a leader and I should be perfect. Well, I'm not. And I never will be till I'm perfected by Him when I see Him in the twinkling of an eye, then talk to me about it. But you know why it's important for us to realize this? Because I'm calling God to send us a thousand people. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. And they're not going to come until they realize they can come in here and be loved and accepted yeah. and not judged for what's wrong with them. Yeah. Yeah. 
And you know how they're going to find that out? They're going to look at you and see themselves. Because you're going to tear that veil down. And you're going to say, look at here. I'm full of holes, man. I'm shot to pieces. But Jesus is still Lord and Master of my life. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I don't deserve it. I can't earn it. But I'm still in love with the reckless one who gave his life for me. Yes, yes, yes. Is that right? And our new veil hides the true glory of God that manifests in weakness. When I'm weak, Yes. Yes. I'm trading in the real glory for this fake thing. Yeah. Who do you think's impressed with it? One time Taylor told me that she we put our kids in school and, 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 and they had this moment and it was like in a cheerleading camp or something and, and, and Taylor shared something she was going through and the girls were so shocked. And they said, We we thought you were perfect and you never had any problems and and I've had people tell me, but Pastor, you don't know what that's like. I'm thinking, what planet do you think I live on? <laughs> Are you from that moron store? <laughs> <laughs> pain is pain, isn't it? Yes, sir. And I'm just saying, I want you to agree with me. That we're going to let Jesus tear that old, ugly thing we built down and be real. And just be free. Because I don't have anybody else to impress. I don't have anybody else that's got to, you know, I've got to go up there and shine really bright for them so I can get my promotion. No, just be yourself. And the one that made you will promote you. He'll give you the places that you will fucking be. But until you get that thing down you built, they can't see it. And you think, i got to have this, because, Lord, if they really knew. Mm -hmm. You know what? Give us a shot. Right. You know what you're going to find out? Everybody's the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody's the same. Yeah. Troubles are all the same. Yeah. Right. We all fall down. We all make mistakes. We all yeah. don't do it just right. right. That doesn't change your calling. Right. That doesn't change your anointing. Right. doesn't change your gift. God's Amen. waiting for you to step up and do what you've been called to do. Amen. I don't care if some people kicked you out. I don't care if some people shot you in the head. I got some fire. Go pull up on it. Now let's go. That's right. Right. John 21, we finished the story. Watch this. So when they had eaten breakfast, you know there's preachers involved. <laughs> wow. They're all eating. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch this. He said, it, Jesus said to Simon Peter, look at this. You still with me? Yeah. He said, Simon, son of John. Wait a minute, I thought Jesus gave him another name. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Did he say, you're, you're Simon... Yeah, but I'm going to call you Peter, right? Because on this rock, I'll build my church. Why did Jesus go back and call him Simon, son of John? Because he's going back to the start with him. He's going back to the beginning. Yeah. We're not going to build on this stuff anymore, Simon. We're not going to build on this failure that you've already taken as an identity. We're not going to go there. We're going all the way back. He said, do you love me more than these? That love word was the word of God failed. And it really means, will you love me in spite of anything else? Will you make a stand and make it a moral obligation for you to love me? And then Peter says, well, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And that word love's different. Right. You know, I have affection for you. I like you. Yeah. That wasn't what Jesus was asking. Okay. He said, if you love me, feed my lambs. And then he said to him again a second time. Everybody say second. second. The Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Same question. He said to him, yes, Lord. Hey, you know that I love you. Same response. He said, tend my sheep. And then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah. Why did he say to him three different times? Because Peter denied him three different times. And he was going to give him a chance three times to, to turn it around and make it right. If Peter had denied him four times, he'd asked him four times. Because he's going to say to him, Simon Peter, I called you when you were Simon, son of Jonah. I, before you ever were endued with that revelation, I still had a call on your life. So we're going to go all the way back to the back, and I'm going to call you again. You're not a fisherman any longer. You're a fisher of men. Yeah. My opinion of you has not changed one bit. And so we're going to go back, and every time you deny me, I'm going to give you a chance to tell me you love me. Thank you, Lord. 
I got people I know who are in the ministry and they're working at Home Depot. That's right. right. We got to go get those people. Amen. Yes. We got to tell them one one strike is not does not make you out. That's right. How we going How we going What do you think Jesus was saying that the field were wide in the harvest? He didn't say let's get them, boys. To right. <laughs> pray what? For laborers. Yes. Who do you think that is? Us. Everybody. Everybody. Yes. As many as you can tote. Because he's coming back, and as many as we can tell us how many we got to take with us. Are you yeah. still with me? Yeah. And finally, Peter realized, and he said, Ooh, come on, Pastor. Jesus asked him the third time, and I think this is interesting. He met him where he was. He even didn't even demand of him the, the moral integrity. He just said, okay, how about this? If you do, just like me a lot. Let's build on that. Yeah. Let's go from there. He said, Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Next page. We'll lower the lights if we can. I don't know what you want. I can't make anything happen for you, but I'll tell you what, we've got an awesome opportunity right now. For some of you, instead of putting that old garment on and trying to swim up to Jesus and pretend everything's okay, yeah. won't you strip that mess off right yeah. before and say, Lord, I'm so tired yeah. of carrying this, this image and this thing that I hide behind because I'm afraid that if anybody knew who, how I was or I was injured or hurt and I can't trust anymore, it's just too heavy to carry. Lord, I messed up and I, I did things I didn't want to do. And, well, you know what? There's not anybody in this room. There's not anybody on this planet that hasn't done those things. You know what's cool? Is you're still alive. You're still above dirt. And he's not finished with you. He never was finished with him. You're the one that got finished with him. Right. Here's what I want to ask you to finally be free. To not have to be condemned ever again. To lose the impulse to cover or hide. But to be forgiven. Forgiven. To never feel the shame imposed by anyone ever again. Romans 8.1 in, in, in God's Word translation says it's impossible for the children of God to be condemned anymore. Why God is mystified, then we be just like a child. Why don't you bow your head, Lord? How many of you this morning? If, will you be honest? Can we just get there? Nobody's going to ask you a question. Nobody's going to point it out. And if anybody looks up and, 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 and mulls anything about you, I'm going to tomahawk you. But I want to see the truth this morning. Are you worn out? Carrying that old identity, carrying that old mindset, carrying that thing that, that imprisons you. Some of you have been hurt, deeply wounded, betrayed, and you can't get past it. I'm telling you, the people that did it are already on their way. You're the only person still suffering. And if you'll let it go, leave it at the feet of Jesus, strip off all that mess, and be free this morning, you'll get your life back. There are people here that you've been, you're fighting all kinds of mess, habits and, and thoughts and all kinds. You know what? And it's become your identity. And I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus has never, ever stopped calling you his beloved. He has never, ever tur turned his back on you. And those things that you think define you do not define you. Quit looking at your sin and look at your Savior. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get it started all over this morning if you want to. And I'm not asking if you're saved. I'm not asking if you're all that stuff. I'm just saying, if you're fed up and you want this new life, why do you need this new life? Because we're on a mission to save the lost. And you know what's funny about the kingdom? The cracks in these broken vessels is where the light shines out.
So Father, I pray for all of us. I curse the accuser of the brethren and I say, you're going to shut up right now. And I thank you, Lord, that you're wooing us and you're drawing us and you're courting us to come back into your presence because you're not going to hand out punishment. You're going to throw your arms around us and kiss us on the face. If you want to come and have an experience this morning, Oh, I want to invite you to come to this altar. Nobody's going to come get you. Nobody's going to acknowledge it or make, make it into anything. But it can be a wonderful, marvelous moment. It's for you. Amen.